الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور These are the duas that they are so much significant and they hold a lot of emphasis that I came across a hadith of our Holy Prophet of Islam, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He is quoted to have said, Man da'a bihaadha du'a fi shahr Ramadhan ba'da al-maktuba istaghfarat dhunubahu ila yawm al-qiyama. Rasulullah says that whoever recites this du'a Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil quburi surur After every prescribed prayers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive The sins of a mu'min the, 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 the sins of a reciter Till the day of judgment It holds such a high emphasis It is so much emphasized to recite this dua Sometimes we take it very lightly But this dua is so much recommended in this holy month of Ramadan. Now, what does it mean when it says, Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil quburi surur? O oh Allah, instill happiness in the spirits of the inhabitants of the grave. See, the inhabitants of the grave, there are so many mu'mineen that we, they were with us. They were sitting in the same Imam, imam Barga. We were praying together, but this year they are not with us. They are not amongst us. Or the year before, the previous year, the previous years, the mu'minin were there. We can still remember them. Their pictures is in our is in our minds. We can remember them. They are not there. So where are they? They are in Barzakh. Barzakh is a period from death till the day of judgment. Now they have got a right on us. We have got what is their right? Their right is that we remember them. When we remember them, at least by saying that Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil quburi surur Allah instill happiness, gladden them The way the, tra the, the translation says here, gladden them That they should become glad Surur, see, there are two concepts There is one concept And we, what concept is that? That sometimes you give surur to a mu'min In this world, that also contains a lot of thawab A lot of thawab That in the time of our sixth holy imam when a person was doing a mustahab tawaf and then he, he and, and when a, and a mu'min was screaming that help me, I need help, assist me, I need help and when a person said that I'm doing a mustahab tawaf, don't disturb me Imam overheard him, Imam, Imam as sadiq al -Islam happened to hear him Imam told him that what are you doing? Do you know that helping a mu'min, making him happy, now this is giving surur to a mu'min in this world is better than Imam says tawaf ten times then tawaf, 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 tawaf Imam doesn't say ten times Imam repeats the word tawaf ten times himself practically says it is better than tawaf, tawaf, tawaf now this is giving happiness to a mu'min in this world and what is the concept of giving happiness of the, so that a mu'min or a mu'mina who has already passed away, especially our relatives, sometimes you have got parents, you have lost them. What should we do for them? Our sixth holy imam was asked that if we recite for a mu'min who passed away, does he get something? Does he benefit anything? Imam as sadiq says yes, he benefits. Just like a, a living being rejoices when he is given a gift. When you give a gift to a living being, he rejoices, isn't it? He becomes happy. He's so pleased. Why? Because he got a gift. Imam says that even a dead person, gets a, he, he rejoices when he is given a gift. Uh, the Holy Prophet of Islam happened to pass to a dead, to a, to a grave. When he passes by a grave, it was a new grave. 
that the deceased was buried just a day before. And the people, his family, were weeping. They were mourning. They were crying for the deceased. It is very normal that if you lose your father or your mother or your beloved person from your family, you'll find that people will, especially your own family, will mourn. They were weeping. The Holy Prophet said, the too small unit of prayer, that is two rakat of salah, which you consider insignificant is more lovable to the inhabitant of this grave than your world in its entirety. Just two rakat salah, pray for him, Imam says. Rasulullah says, it is better than you weep for him. The Holy Prophet says, Inna al-hadaya lil amwat ad-dua wal istighfar. The hadaya, hadaya means gifts. For amwat is istighfar and, and dua. And you pray for them. You pray for them. You remember them in your prayers. In your sajda shukr. See, Nabi Ibrahim Pray this dua which is there in Quran Majid. Rabbi Ghfirli Wali Wali Daya Walil Mu'minina Yawma Yakumul Hisab. The translation you know. He prayed for his parents when he was 100 years old, but he prayed for his parents. Rabbi Ghfirli Wali Wali Daya for my parents and forgive them on the day of judgment. It is such an important concept that to give them surur, those who have passed away. Rasulullah, when he would go to Qabristan, he would say, Assalamu alaikum ya ahl al -kubur. And one of the companions said that, Ya Rasulullah, do they, can they listen? Rasulullah says that they listen more than you do. When we greet them, they reply us and they respond to us. Our eighth holy imam says that whoever, whoever goes to Qabristan, and he prays seven times in Nanzalna, on the grave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him, and will forgive the, the sahib -e qabr and the, and the deceased, the inhabitant of the grave. It is so much important that on a day like today, at least, you see, today, tonight is Thursday night. It is makhsus for marhumin that the souls of marhumin they come to our houses who are close to us and they weep and they scream and they say that we have done so much for you in your lifetime. Today you have forgotten us. The parents if whom we have left, it is said in Riwaya, that there are some children, they were very obedient in their lifetime, but they became disobedient when we left. Meaning what? Mean those, meaning those children, the, those who have completely forgotten their parents. Completely. They are not sending anything as hadaya, as gifts. To, because when you send some things, one surah fatiha, one yasin, one tasbih of istighfar, it is said that, that the, the night like tonight, Thursday night, if a tasbih of istighfar is being done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins of that believer. It, it is as if a person has come out from his mother's womb, like a newborn baby. So if you do tasbih of istighfar for your deceased, Allah will forgive the sins of your deceased. And lastly, I'll end up with one advice which is from Ayatollah Shahabuddin Marashi Najafi. Ayatollah Shahabuddin Marashi Najafi, he gave a very thought-provoking advice to his son. And in his wasiyah, he writes to his son that, oh my son, recite for me Quran, he says, and then do this hadaya, hadaya, hadaya this hadaya, to those mu'mineen who do not have, who, who passed away and who do not have offsprings. There are so many mu'minin, they are not blessed with children, unfortunately. Allah knows the reason, whatever is best for them. But Ayatollah, Mar Ayatollah Shahabuddin and Marashi and Ajafi says that you pray, then you give this gift to those parents who don't have offsprings. Because those parents who have got offsprings, the offsprings, the children will remember their parents. But those who do not have offsprings, who will remember them? Thus you recite Quran for them. When I came across this uh, advice of Ayatollah Marashi Najafi, I remembered the Holy Lady Zahra alayhi salam. Do you remember her, her wasiyah? What did she say to Imam Ali alayhi salam? She says to Imam Ali alayhi salam that, Ya Ali, in the middle of the night, do come to my grave and recite for me Quran i Majid. And Ali alayhi salam would go to the grave of Zahra 
and he would recite the verses of Quran and Majid. It is said that when in the middle of the night, when he was reciting the verses of Quran, all of a sudden, the grave of Zahra started trembling. And Ali alayhi salam poses a question to Zahra alayhi salam that, oh Zahra, what happened? Are you remembering what, what happened? Why is your grave trembling? And she says that, Ya Ali, you have come here to recite Quran for me. It is my wasiya. But at home, Hussein has woken up. Hussein is my younger son, youngest son. And he has woken up and he's, uh, he's got a habit of drinking water in the middle of the night. He's waking up from his sleep and he's asking for water and there's no one to give Hussein water. Hai khairun nisa Fatima Fatima Hai khairun nisa Fatima Fatima Ek mehshar utha ik Qiyamat machi